very busy week. On Tuesday, we took our cows in for butcher. We took two of them in. We have two more to go this Tuesday. And on Wednesday, we did in all of our chickens. We harvested 14 birds and that was a busy day. Today, I have honey. We stumbled across a honey hive, which kind of seems like a once in a lifetime kind of thing. You don't typically just stumble across honey. Um, but we were renovating my sister-in-law's house and they had in one of the walls an old hive. And I, I feel awful that like all of the bees were gone, but I am really hoping that they just left the hive and found a new hive. Um, but the previous owners had spray foamed the entrance that they were using to get in and I know that they will find another entrance wherever they can. But there's also another wasp nest just on the other side of that same wall. So either the spray foam or the wasps drove out the honeybees. So there was a massive honey hive. I will hopefully attach pictures. And uh, we had honey to harvest. Um, when you stumble across something like that, you don't just leave it and let it go to waste. Um, those bees worked very hard for that honey. So the least we can do is enjoy the fruit of their labor. So. This is the second time we've stumbled across something like this. Uh, the first time was in a tree trunk that was dead and falling over the road and we had to get rid of the tree not knowing that there was a hive in it. And I will try and attach pictures of that time as well. Um, I learned some lessons the first time harvesting the honey that I was able to apply this time. And it's gone a little bit easier and a little bit quicker except that we have far more honey this time than we did last time. So I'm gonna give you some tips and some tricks and materials that you're gonna need. We are not processing the honey with heat. It is all cold processing. And since this is a wild honeycomb, um, it's not something that you could put into like a spinner that you usually see um, for honey harvesting. This will be done strictly through sifting and gravity. <laughs> Um, so without further ado, we have a little setup here and as you can see, I have some honey in jars already. Um, for every jar of honey that you have, you need another empty jar. So double the amount of jars that you need and you need straws and you can just get plastic straws from the dollar store. The bendy ones are fun. Um, you're going to need cheesecloth. Um, rubber bands make things a little bit easier. You will need a sifter, just your standard sifter. I got these at the dollar store for a buck. Actually, I got two of them for a buck. Um, whatever your honey is in will be your starting point. Um, we have a lot of honey that is in a giant Rubbermaid laundry hamper. Um, then you will need a honey bowl and you will need a waste bowl or a wax bowl. So here I have a honey bowl and here I have a wax bowl. I started the process already. Uh, so I have my first set of jars here. They have already been sifted um, and they've been uh, passed through the jars once. Um, these have just been sifted and we are going to show you how to pass them through the jar. Okay, so we've just refilled the sifter and it is going great. Lots of goodness coming through there. This is gonna catch all of the chunks of beeswax, all of the dead bees, um, any sort of other debris or insects uh, will also get caught in here. So we're gonna let that sit. Uh, it's best to let it sit as long as you possibly can. Um, typically, like we've been either filling it in the evening before we go to bed and then scraping it out and putting new honey in in the morning and letting it sit most of the day to filter out because once you empty this out, it goes into the waste bucket here. Well, we call it the waste bucket, but the wax bucket. Um, and we're not, we're not doing anything more with that. So I really wanna get every drop of honey that I possibly can out of this. Um, and it's really, uh, it's really good to do this as soon as you can because the longer the honey sits, um, in our green bin because it's mashed up and the caps are all broken. The longer it sits, the thicker it's going to get and then the harder it is to process. So the sooner that you can get everything done, 
um, the better and it'll just work out great. So uh, I know I'm taking this view and my head is kind of cut off, but I really want you to be able to see what's going on here. So I'm just going to set this aside. Uh, and now we have all of this. So I'm going to actually change the view and show you all of that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and filter these. Now you really want to make sure here, it's really important to make sure that these line up. They're the same jars. We have two different sizes. Um, these two and these two. So you really want to make sure that they line up because we're going to be tipping them over and they need to sit perfectly. So we'll set those back. And we'll start, start with the big guy here. These have already been filtered once. And so we have our cheesecloth. And uh, this as it is, is two layers. So I'm gonna fold it in half. Um, so now we're at four layers. And I'm gonna fold it in half again. And these are a little damp because I rinsed them off. It doesn't really seem to matter, like I, I'm sure People will tell you different or tell you a bunch of different ways and I'm sure everybody has their own way, but this works for us. So I put the rubber band on um, to try and make sure it doesn't really have any significant value except that when you tip the jar over, uh, I'll show you here in a second, you're going to have this straw in it. Um, and when you're tipping it over, you want to hang on to the straw and you really have to guide and direct it so that it doesn't get caught in the honey because you don't want this end to be plugged. Um, so this elastic band just helps the cheesecloth to stay over the lip while I can get it seated. Um, and that just helps with, um, I've had a couple of times where I flip it and the cheesecloth came down and then I spilled honey everywhere and that just, that just breaks your heart. So just don't do that. Um, there's a lesson learned. Um, so as you can see here, there is uh, a lot of filter cloth weaving and you just want to find a spot closer to the edge where you have the most, um, the most string, the most, the thickest layer. Um, you don't want it to be too loose, the, um, the thickness, I guess, because you want it to actually hold the straw in there. Um, I find that if the cloth is just a little bit damp, it'll keep the straw from, um, from sliding out with the pressure of the honey. So I've inserted a little bit here uh, and you can see it inside the jar, I think. Um, so the honey starts right here. And as I tip this jar over, I need to make sure that this straw doesn't get plugged up in the honey. So I'm gonna flip it now. And as I'm flipping it, I'm just guiding that straw up and through. And you have a very short window um, to get this seated. And then it'll start coming out. Now the straw here, you're gonna ask me, <laughs> what is that straw for? The straw allows the air to pass from the bottom to the top. Um, the first time I did this, we didn't have a straw in place and what happens is it gets a vacuum seal and so then the honey won't pass through the, the cloth, it won't pass into the bottom jar. Instead, it'll start to seep out around the edges because of the weight of the honey. You're still going to get some that seeps out around the edges anyway. Um, I can't find a way around that. Uh, I'm sure that you could figure it out if you, um, if you did like a hot process or something. Um, but the hunt, the straw is very important and it just allows that to happen. So this here, uh, we're going to set it aside and we're going to let it filter and we're going to move on to the next one. Um, each time it gets filtered, um, you're able to add another layer um, and it's just going to catch a little bit more. You don't want to put too thick a cheesecloth on first. These ones, I'm only going to put them through. Um, so here we have two layers. I'm just going to fold it in thirds um, and it's it's a much looser weave um, and this is just going to allow honey to still pass through because there's so much still in here. We don't want it to clog up completely before the honey gets through because then it'll start to seep out around the sides. So you really want to make sure that your first pass is on a looser 
um, I'm gonna call it a weave, a looser weave of the cheesecloth. And then the second time you pass it through, you can, you can add more layers. So you could even double this up again if you wanted to. It's gonna pass through much slower, um, but it's gonna catch more. And I will go ahead and process these and show you in a second. I have filtered the honey, uh, I filtered it five times and I filtered it two times. Um, the ones that went through uh, five times, they didn't, they didn't look any different than the ones that went through, sorry, three times. So the two, the, the five and the three, there isn't a difference between what gets held back. You just end up losing honey in your cheesecloth. So we've decided that we're just gonna filter them down to three passes instead of five. This is all of the leftover wax. Now there is everything in this. There are, there are dead bees in there. There is dirt in there. There is, I'm sure, dust in there. There's all kinds of broken up wax and it is gooey and sticky. So a lot of people will harvest the wax um, we don't have anything for it. Like we, we don't have a use for the wax. We don't have any desire to process down the wax. I'm sure we could, um, but we have a friend who is super excited to get this. So we're gonna donate all of this wax to her and she will melt it down and uh, either make candles or lip balms. So that will be amazing. Okay guys, honey is a sticky process. Everything will have honey on it. So some helpful tricks here are under the jars, I slid in some parchment paper. Now you can use nose paper or anything. Uh, it just really helps if and when your jars sort of overflow that once you rinse them off, you can just wrap that paper up and throw it in the garbage. Um, and that helps a little bit. Uh, ladies, if you have long hair, definitely tie that up, keep that back. Um, old clothes, something you're not really too concerned about getting sticky is great. Um, and try and keep a little rag that you can use and make sure you keep that uh, warm. So when you do make a spill or something drips, just go ahead and wipe that up with a warm cloth. Um, when pushing the straw up through the jars, you really wanna be aware and confident that when you're pushing the straw up, that what's left in the bottom jar is shorter than where the honey will fill it up to because you don't want the honey to plug the straw from the bottom. Um, so you don't want it to be too short, um, but definitely make sure that the straw remaining in the bottom jar isn't too long. Um, and one really, really important thing, it's probably the most important thing about processing raw honey, is if you ever come across wild honey, please, please make sure that the colony is either dead or has abandoned that uh, hive for some reason um, and that they're not just dormant. Uh, bees go dormant uh, usually in the winter time. So just make sure that that is what is going on.